Aloha, welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to another episode of Pimp My Prusa. Last year, we totally blinged out the Mark III in the blue and neon yellow UV reactive CPE from Filamentum. It's held up beautifully, could not ask for better results, but it's time to do some maintenance on the printer. And over the past year, Prusa's released a lot of new revisions to the parts files as well as all of the R3 parts for the hot end and the cooling system. So since I'm going to break it down for maintenance, we might as well update it as well. But this year we're going to do something a little bit different. This year we're going to go retro. Ready? Let's do it. Okay, so I said we were gonna go retro. And what I mean by that is there's this really awesome filament by Carbodian called PLA plus Nano Diamond. It has this really cool look to it, the coloring on it, that almost looks like an, an 80s style uh, PC or Mac or even almost like a Game Boy, like an original first generation Game Boy has a, 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 just a really cool retro color to it. Uh, it prints like butter. It, it is a PLA. It can be annealed and heat treated uh, if you want to make it stronger. I didn't do that for this, and I'll explain why in a bit, but I didn't have the need to heat treat it for this, but you can do it. Keep in mind it will shrink like other HT PLAs. But the reason I didn't need to do it is because I won't be getting it necessarily near the hot end here, and it should be strong enough for all of the other components just as is. I wanted to see what the nano diamonds uh, bring to the table. Um, aside from being a lubricant, the you would think it would be abrasive having diamonds in it, but the ni nano diamonds are actually uh, almost spherical in shape is my understanding. And they act like a natural lubricant as it goes through the hot end. So you can use your standard brass nozzle. You don't even need a hardened or a treated nozzle or a ruby. The other thing that we're going to do to this is we're going to put the, the new uh, Bontech Prusa uh, extruder on here that Bontech has designed. And this was a community's design that Bontech brought to the market. Uh, the body of this is SL, SLS printed. And it's, it's just stunning. I mean, it looks like it was cast in, in sandstone or something. Um, but we're going to go one step further. Jason from LDO Motors sent this over to me. Uh, this is a alternate motor to use on this rather than the, the stock Bontech motor. Um, it is a high torque 0.9 degree stepper for higher precision. Tom from Filament Frenzy has been playing with one of these with his, and there's a few others out there that have these uh, as well. Um, so I'm really, really anxious to see what this gets for us. Now, I want to quantify and say, if you have a Mark III and it's performing well, you don't need to do the upgrades that we're doing. Uh, again, my biggest reason for doing this is to move to the R3 parts that Prusa has released, as well as to get the Bontech on. Uh, blinging it is just a side benefit. If your Mark III is well maintained and it's printing beautifully for you, you don't need to do this. Uh, Joel Telling still has all the original parts on his Mark III, and it prints for him like a dream. Um, you know, when we've talked, he can't really picture the need to upgrade it. If you are finding that you're getting a lot of, of, of hot end jams or you'd like better part schooling uh, or some of the other improvements that the, the R3 upgrade brings, and there's a link, by the way, in the description down below to the R3 upgrade and talks a little bit more about that. Uh, but it, it might be a good thing for you to do, especially if you're going to be taking it apart for maintenance. Last but not least, Always make sure that you have your Prusa 3D printing handbook and your Prusa Mark III 
manual with you when you take it apart and put it back together. I'm going to go through, go ahead and disassemble this thing in high speed on a time lapse for you. There's no reason to walk through the details of that. Um, it's just mostly taking the screws out and clipping wire ties and sorting all the pieces back out. So let's head to the time lapse. Shut up and sit down. Sit down. Okay, at this point, we now have a naked Prusa. Oh, boy, what an effort. Um, I did want to point out a couple of things because I went through that really fast in the time lapse. The first is, because I'm blinging this, I did a complete teardown. I took it, other than separating the wires, I took it down to bare bones. If you are only doing the R3 upgrade, you don't need to take it back that far. Prusa has a separate set of directions on their website that talks about tearing it down and how to do that upgrade. So check there if that's all that you want to do. I also am not going to replace the plastic parts on the power supply. I don't want to get in there and mess with the mains wiring or the uh, power panic sensor or anything and have to desolder and solder that back together. I can live with black on that because it matches the, the, the frame and the other pieces. So we're going to go from there. So I've got all but a few pieces ready here, enough to get started. Uh, I've got my zip ties. I've got these fancy blue zip ties for the bulk of it. And then a couple of the leftover Prusa zip ties for going around the bearings. So let's go back into time lapse mode. I'm going to start putting this thing back together. And I will add some commentary over that if I have anything to point out. Take it away.
Well, is what it is. Um, if you if you caught it there on the time lapse, while this nano diamond filament prints beautifully and it's it's supposed to be very very strong. Um, in fact, in telling, the weak point is shearing at uh, layer points. The, the layer adhesion appears to be the weakness. Um, I went back during between the time lapse and now and reviewed a video put out by Stefan over in Germany. And he had also found that the, the weak point of this filament was the, the layer adhesion. Uh, in his testing, in tensile strength and testing, the, the, the weakness was the, how it stuck together. And yeah, I'm, I'm just disappointed. I'd, I'd really hoped that I uh, could pull this off and make this work. Um, but I'm not even going to waste any time going any further. Even if I were to print parts, replacements for those parts that I shattered, I don't want to get the thing three-fourths of the way together or have it printing and have a part shear in the middle of a print. So taking a step back, I'm going to rethink this a bit and we'll pick this up once I can reprint the parts in another filament. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. Best laid plans and all. I really hope to make this work, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm just a little disappointed here. So I'd really high hopes this filament is just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. But, oh well, I'm going to call it there. We'll pick this up again next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.